Hey there, welcome to our online cooking show today. It'll be the first of several to come. So just to avoid any confusion that may be going on, I'm Mary and this is Sister Sarah. And we're really excited to make you a healthy soup uh, with a pesto made with nuts and seeds and an antiviral lemonade today. Just a little bit about us. We've been passionate foodies our whole lives. Uh, Mom and dad always love to cook and they've instilled that passion in us. And you know, we were classically French trained. And so we used to use a lots, of, lots of cream and butter and white flour. And we migrated more towards the California healthy side of things. And, are fortunately feeling better now at almost 50 than we were at 25. Yeah, we really do believe that food is medicine and if we just take special care in the decisions we make around food, we can really feel better. Yeah. So we just want to show you how easy cooking can be at home and we hear from so many people as we're out cooking with our cooking shows, you know, here in Marin County and all around that people get tripped up in the kitchen, they get frustrated with how long it takes and how frustrated they are with the cleanup and all this. So we just want to make it really easy and for you. Fun. And fun. Sorry you to cook yeah. at home. So let's get started here. We're going to start with the soup. And the rainbow veggie soup. And the beginning to a good soup really starts with garlic and onions. Yeah, but before, I just want to tell you, um, we made a beautiful chicken stock last night. And it's about eight cups of water with a couple pounds of chicken bones. I got some feet and some necks and some backs and uh, some garlic and celery and onions. So that just sort of simmered all night long, really easy. If you haven't made one in a while, make a good bone broth. And we always add a little Bragg's uh, apple cider vinegar to our broth. And that's the way we can pull out the calcium from the bones and other minerals. Okay, so that's a good So tip. if Just you don't down. have a homemade veggie or bone broth on hand, we're big fans of these products better than bouillon. Can you see that? Um, you can just get this at your local grocery store. They're pretty clean and you can get a veggie or a beef or a um, chicken base. So you can make your stock that way if you want. So I'm gonna start with mincing some garlic here. And I'm gonna do this on my Salad Master food processor. And if you don't have that, it's totally cool. You can mince your garlic by hand or using a garlic press works yeah, great. Yeah, most of you probably have some sort of garlic jacket at home. But this, this Salad Master food processor really does make things super easy. So I've just basically mince a bulb of garlic here in a few seconds. And I'm gonna stick my hand in here. Don't worry, it's not gonna cut me. So you can see how fast we have some minced garlic. And we're gonna add it here to the cook, to the pot. And then we're going to add some onion. So I'm quartering an onion here. And Mary is going to slice this onion using cone two of the salad master food processor. But you could just slice it. You could slice it in your kitchen. We just, again, love this for ease in the kitchen. And I have a little tip for you. When you chop onions and garlic, there's an antioxidant called allicin. And allicin is activated by the air and it's a potent cancer fighter. So when you're prepping your soup, you know, your onions, your garlic, anything in the allium family, like leeks, shallots, if you let the onions and garlic just sort of hang out while you're prepping the other ingredients, you'll actually be doing yourself a favor because the onions and garlic will have more cancer fighting potential. So I'm just gonna put the onions and garlic together in um, a five quart saucepan. And we're not gonna add any, traditionally, I would have put a tablespoon or two of oil in the pan with the onions and garlic and saute, which you can totally do. But um, we have learned about, uh, we've 
gotten a little bit healthier and we're not heating oils to high temperature as often as we used to. So we're gonna do what we call, um, it's, a min it's just basically a water saute. So we're gonna put the onions and garlic with a little bit of the water, the, you can put a little water or broth in there. And we're gonna basically cook it on medium high for five to seven minutes, my eyes are watering. Um, so just a little bit healthier way, but you can certainly caramelize them with a little oil if you want. Okay, so that's gonna get going there. Um, and then I'm gonna just start cutting up some vegetables. I'm gonna start with a red bell pepper here. This is, it, the recipe calls for two small red bell peppers, but this one's kind of large. So I'm just going to, to chop this up quickly. And I take the little rib and the seeds out here. And then you could use red bell pepper, an orange, or a green. I like the red ones because they're just sweeter. So while I'm doing this, Mary's gonna, she's going to grate a butternut squash, a quarter of a, of a medium butternut squash. And so we peel that. It's about a quarter of a peel small this one. with a vegetable peeler and remove the seeds, okay? So I'm just going to chop the butternut squash real quickly on my salad master, but again, you can just rough chop it at home if that's your preference here. Some people like to buy butternut squash already prepared at the grocery store, and I think that's fine. It just never tastes quite as fresh as I like. Okay, so we've got our red peppers and our butternut squash, and I'm gonna do a carrot real quickly. You'll notice here that I'm not gonna peel the carrot because up to 90% of the nutrition is concentrated in the peeling of most vegetables. So it's just so contrary to our classic French training where we always have to peel everything. But Nowadays, we really don't. We make a conscious effort to not take the feeling off. And it's just one step to easier cooking. Okay. So I want to talk, the next veggie in the rainbow veggie soup is a Romanesco. Are you all familiar with Romanesco? It's a cousin of the cauliflower. And it just, it looks almost pixelated, like crystals. It's just, they're perfectly exquisite. So a friend of ours brought this back from his garden in Healdsburg, but they're readily available at the grocery stores now. So and it's a really good idea to get in the habit of cooking with lots of different colors. So sometimes they have green cauliflower, sometimes purple, sometimes orange, other times white, and we invite you to think about not always going to the white cauliflower. You think of different colors because it's all about diversity of the microbiome in terms of increasing our immunity. I mean, it's flu season, right? So we wanna make sure that we're doing everything we can to get a large variety of, of fruits and vegetables. And just think, colors of the rainbow, right? And this is why we chose this rainbow veg soup today because it's just got it's chock full of vitamins. So I wanted to share with you a health tip about the Romanesco or any sort of cauliflower. Uh, we're often trained to take the <clears throat> to take the florets off and then to discard this. But there's a lot of pepsin in the core of cauliflower. So Mary's just gonna just rice that, or you could cut it up. We'll throw that out. It helps mitigate some of the gassiness that cruciferous vegetables have. So Mary's doing that and um, okay so we're going to put the carrots and a little bit of this cauliflower right into the soup here in a minute. But just back to caramelizing onions here, a really good soup starts with caramelized onions and garlic, right? Because you want to bring out the sugars in the vegetable, okay? So it takes about 10 to 15 to even 20 minutes to caramelize onions. For the sake of time, we're gonna speed that process up a little bit. But what you're looking for is you want all the moisture in the pan to evaporate. 
And then you're looking for a little bit of caramelization, a little browning in the pan. You can always, when you're doing a minimal moisture saute, you can always add a little bit more broth or water to it. But the more you cook the onions and garlic initially, the better your soup will taste. Yeah, it's so no, don't that, rush that process. That raw, the raw factor will dissipate, right? That's right. So you want so, the caramelization and the sweetness. So we've got our onions and garlic kind of um, caramelizing down. If you come look here, we've got a little bit of liquid here, and eventually that will just dissipate, and then we'll add, and we'll see a little brownness yes. around the, you know, the so edge. So let's keep that cooking for now. And we'll talk about some of the other ingredients in the soup, and then we'll add it That's all together. Right. So the next ingredient is um, a little bit of fire-roasted diced tomatoes. We love the Mir, the Mir Glen. Uh, this is our favorite brand, but any sort of fire roasted crushed tomato will work one can. And I wanted to say that I love the medium green chilies in there. Oh, There's that's two nice. different types that, that you can get and for this soup And this today, one doesn't have it. Yeah, so, so it's sort of it's better you know, hard to see, but go for the medium green chilies if you want a little kicker in your soup. It's delicious. And then we're going to add some fresh thyme and a little bit of turmeric powder. Mary and I love these little guys. Look at them. It's just a little planted fresh thyme. It's fun to keep these in your kitchen. It's really delicate. Thyme can get really horsey this time and of year. That's right. So. And so when it's really woody, especially in woody. the winter time, then it doesn't make it as easy like this to is sort of woody. Right. All right. So what's brilliant about this, or you know, any thyme in a root ball, sometimes. Um, you can just buy a root ball in a little container. But this also is a delicate bunch of thyme. And look how easy it is to chop. You know, back to our, our uh, classic French training, they would always ask us to remove each of the leaves from the stem. But look how fast and easy that is if you seek the delicate thyme as opposed to the woodsy. You may not have an option, but look out for it, okay? So, so see how fast and easy that was. And oh, so you'll get to the stem of the thyme here, and this is just what I save for the bone broth. Sarah and I make bone broth two, three times a week. It's really good to drink bone broth. It's known to heal and seal the gut. People have things like leaky gut and all sorts of health issues, so it's a really potent sealer of the gut. So we keep things like, you know, let's see, we've got some onion, um, some onion peels and some garlic, like, you know, a leftover garlic bowl, but we just hold this in our refrigerator so it'll be ready to go when we want to make soup, or you can throw it in the freezer. So, so that's just the that's, secret to really think, make the soup. Katie, come over here and look at these onions. You see how I'm getting some brown in there? That's where the flavor is. That's good caramelization. So we're going to go ahead and add the, the chicken stock. We have six cups of homemade chicken stock here. To, we're Ooh. adding that to the caramelized onions and garlic. And then we're going to add Oh, were we supposed to? I think we were supposed to saute huh. these. Huh. We, we can never follow yeah. I think we were going to saute all the vegetables and then add the stock. But anyway, it'll be delicious either way. Okay, so we're going to add the rest of our vegetables. Here's some carrots and that inner core of the cauliflower going into the soup here. And then the beautiful chartreuse, chartreuse colored Romanesco. And a little salt and pepper, of course. And we're going to put the can of tomatoes, fire roasted, makes the flavor so delicious. And we'll add a little bit of fresh thyme and then a little bit of turmeric powder here. You could add some fresh grated turmeric or the powder. So I'm going to add about a fourth and of a teaspoon of this. Turmeric is a fabulous anti-inflammatory. And did you know if you put a little pepper with turmeric, it activates the power of the turmeric by like a thousand or more times? So mix the pepper with turmeric, always the better help. Okay, so we're gonna let this simmer away here for about, 
I, I would say 10, 10 minutes, Mary, 20 minutes, yeah. 20 minutes. Let's go in about 20 minutes. We're going to send you all these recipes. So that's simmering away. And what we're going to do next is we're going to make our vegan basil pesto. And we, we're shaking up the traditional pesto, right? The traditional pesto is made with basil and lots of pine nuts and garlic and Parmesan cheese. It's always delicious, but we're doing a, a little twist on it. This is a vegan pesto, so we're not going to add any dairy. And instead of the pine nuts, we're substituting pistachios and pumpkin seeds. So it's really chunky. This is a great condiment, not just for this soup, but it's delicious on avocado toast or delicious with a pasta, like any sort of pasta. Um, I mean, I've always like back in air will come literally, we'll make a, a couple cups of it and then oh, yeah. just come eat it like oh, yeah. cereal. Oh, yeah. So it's good on quinoa. It's just a delicious delicious flavor. So I'm starting with some minced garlic again. I'm so addicted to this food processor because it makes mincing garlic so seamless here. Okay, so taking the skin off the I have, I'm not taking the skin off here because the skin actually gets stuck here in the grates of the machine. But look how fast I just minced, you know, a couple tablespoons of garlic. Now this was a bigger a bigger head of garlic than the last one that I did. Now again, uh, Sarah, let's show people how to quickly mince a garlic clove if you don't have the salad master food processor because that's easy to just not quite. So you take a, a clove of garlic and just give it a whack like that. Ooh, that's that's brown. You know, this huh? time of year I've noticed there's a lot of old garlic. So when I see that brown, you can smell it. It's just a little bit off and I don't like that. So that can really taint your pesto. That, that brownness is a little bit, it's just old. So we'll do another one. So see how e easily the sheath comes off like that? And then of course you can just put it in a garlic press and then oh, press it like this, like that, okay? So in the food processor, we're gonna add some basil leaves, about four cups. And I've washed this basil and I've removed it from the more coarse sort of horsey stems, okay? So four cups of freshly washed basil. You know, Try to get and back this. to this whole idea of buying a fresh thyme plant. I oftentimes like to buy a full plant of basil so you can just take a swipe of it if you need it because basil goes rancid very quickly in your refrigerator. So if you can buy a fresh pot of, of herbs and keep it on hand, it's so great way to go. raw pumpkin seeds yeah. and pistachios. So we've got some raw pumpkin seeds and some um, pistachios here. Don't forget about raw pumpkin seeds. It's, you know, a lot of people eat so many nuts, we've noticed, and you know. These are sprouted, of, yeah, too. Some of the, our gurus in the health community say, eat more seeds than nuts. They mm -hmm. actually have, I think, more enzymatic value. Yeah. So it's a good, nice uh, again, to, to diversify, like not just pine nuts in the pesto, but this combination yeah. of nuts, right? So pistachios and pumpkin seeds, and then we're going to add about a half of a cup of a, a mild olive oil. You don't okay, want it to not be too green green or bitter. So it's about a half like a cup. That. Half a cup. And then we're going to add some vegan Parmesan. And Mary and I really like this product. We're tilting in the non-dairy zone. We're not extremists. So feel free to add Parmesan if you, you know, traditional Parmesan, Par Parmesan Reggiano if you like. So. This is about, uh, let's see, how much, this is about a half a cup, about a half a cup of Parmesan. It's called Follow Your Heart. It's actually made with, is it chickpeas, Mary? Uh, chickpeas, yes. Yeah, it's and really interesting. Um, it's delicious. It's in the non-dairy section of your grocery store. And then we're okay. gonna add some nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast, I don't know if you're familiar with nutritional yeast, I think of nutritional yeast is really like your your sort of non-dairy cheese. Um, it's sort of a umami flavor. I first learned about it when my 
littlest Caboose baby was at the Waldorf school and they made popcorn with nutritional yeast and Bragg's amino acids. And that's when I really discovered it. It's really delicious alternative. It. It's, it's just yummy. And I think it's really good for you too. It's got a bunch of B vitamins and, and amino acids. Amino acids. Yeah. Especially B12 and we're all mostly deficient in B12. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the minced garlic here, about a teaspoon and a half. And then we'll add a little salt and pepper and some lemon juice. So some lemon. I hope everybody has a great lemon press for squeezing lemons and limes. There's actually even a bigger one that you can get for oranges or big lemons. Uh, just a little bit of lemon juice will pop the flavor here. Can you okay. show us which way you put that in? Yeah. So the first time I used this, I actually was inclined to do it that way. But you want to put the lemon down this way. And it actually not only squeezes the juice, but it strains it. Strains the seeds out. So it's really fantastic little kitchen utensil. All right, Mary, I'm going to blast Okay, this. so Sarah's going to blast the pesto. And I'm just going to take a look here quickly at the soup. It's looking gorgeous. Yeah, what's going on? And let me help you. Um, we're a little techno challenge. So this is the new machine. Let's see if I can get it going here. Is it not? Oh, it's not. Oh, it's not up. Hang on. And I like it kind of chunky. I, I, I do. It's all pretty. Three times. So Mary's got that going. We're going to serve up, show you a, um, a little, we have some hero rainbow veggie soup. So I'm going to show you. Look at this. And it makes such a fabulous accoutrement to our rainbow soup here. We're going to serve that up in a minute. But should we get started on the antiviral lemonade? Okay, let's do that. Okay. So let's see here. So just a little backstory about this antiviral lemonade is this is a concoction that we make during flu season when we all need to be cognizant of boosting our immune system, okay? And so we're going to just throw all these ingredients in the blender here. And this is something that we strategically keep out on the kitchen counter for when the children come home from school. Um, and we just have swigs of it throughout the day because it's delicious room temperature, warm or cold. Yeah, and uh, it's got such great value in terms of nutrition. So a couple we'll of the products with here that we're using. Four cups of filtered water. Okay, okay, it's right here in a high speed blender or any blender. And we're going to add a splash again of this apple cider vinegar. We like to buy apple cider vinegar that has the mother in it, okay? And that is just a healthier way than getting the refined apple, vin so apple cider vinegars. There's so many health benefits to vinegars. I've even heard that if you have three or four tablespoons a day, over a handful of months, but it translates into the loss of about four or five pounds. It's interesting, I just read yeah. that recently. So we're gonna put some raw turmeric in here. Um, if you're not familiar with the raw, it's just a little rooty thing. It kind of looks like ginger. In fact, don't get it confused with ginger. Um, you see that, Do you Katie? see this orange root It almost here? looks like a carrot. So we're calling for raw turmeric, but you could also, if you can't find it or don't have it on hand, you can also use turmeric powder, like the turmeric powder that we put in the soup. We're really hip to the idea of using turmeric as often as we can. So we're always putting it in our soups and our bone broths, and oftentimes I'll wake up in the morning and have just some lemon water, and I throw some turmeric in there. A little pinch of pepper for a little added pick of nutrition here. So Mary, while I squeeze the lemon, let's talk about manuka honey. So manuka honey is known for its health benefits. And you, when you buy manuka honey, there's a large variety of different options. 
So if you look closely at the labeling, you'll see that there's a number. So there's a, no, a count on here. And can you see this? The count is 100. And then on this particular brand, the count looks to be about 12. They so call it the K factor. And so the higher the number, the more you're gonna pay. So this was given to me as a gift by a friend. This is probably a $85 jar of honey, okay? Activist. But if your budget doesn't allow, you can go with a lower count. And this honey right here was probably $10 at Whole Foods. So Manuka refers to a, a bush in New Zealand. So the bees pollinate that bush. But it really is Let's go special big. enzymatically. Uh -huh. But any sort of raw honey would be just fine too. We look for raw, unpasteurized honey. It's often flowery. And look for local honey yeah. too, if you can. It's yeah. always good to go with local. Okay, so I'm putting some honey in here. And then I just squeezed about a fourth of a cup of lemon juice. Some friend of ours just brought a big old bag of Meyer lemons over. So I'm gonna actually not just add the juice, but I'm also gonna add a half of a Meyer lemon here. You could add, you can use any traditional lemon is just fine. These are just so aromatic and delicious. So I'm just taking the seeds out and I'm just gonna add the whole thing in the blender. Um, and then there's a pinch of cayenne pepper, which stimulates the metabolism, which is great. But the thing about, I really love bitter. It's a real antidote to sweet. And I think that um, if you don't love a little bitter, then I would probably not put a half a lemon in there, but I just think it's healthier. There's so many antiviral, antifungal properties in the pith and also in the skin of the lemons. And so, Sarah, when you added the turmeric and the ginger, you weren't talking us through that. Can you just explain what you did with the... the so I just, I just cut off about, let's see, it was about a half, to a one inch piece of, of ginger, just cut from the, from the finger of the ginger, about a half inch, half to one inch, and then same with this. And notice that I, with the turmeric, so notice that I did not peel, because again, so much of nutrients is in the peeling, okay? And it just makes it so easy and fast. So- And then I'm you gonna, just put them in big chunks? Yeah, so I just cut them in, in small chunks. So I'm gonna put them in the high speed blender and I'm just gonna give it a, a, a few pulses and, uh, and voila, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so you'll see when we send you the recipes that it's, there's an option to put some raw garlic. So it just depends on how um, open you are. Um, so that's an option. If I'm feeling uh, the onset of any cold symptoms or flu symptoms, you bet I'm going to add some raw garlic. Okay, so it's up to you. You just want to make it taste good and drink it as often as possible during the season. So can you come, can you come in and give in, Katie? So you can see this is just frothy deliciousness. Again, it's delicious room temperature. Um, right out of the fridge. We keep this in big mason jars in the refrigerator all winter long. The kids love it. And it's really, again, it's, oh wait, did we strain this? I think so. Here's the deal. Sometimes I strain it and sometimes I don't. It'll have a little bit of the, sort of the fiber. Um, Our recipe does not say to strain I'm it. I'm not straining it. It's up to you. Up, up to, to you. I don't mind a little right. bit of, Let me taste that. of uh, pith in there. What do you think, oh, that's Mary? So delicious! It's so refreshing. Let's see. Always drinking the good cow. Delicious, right? Well, let's serve up the soup. Rainbow soup. Okay, this was our little pair of teeth, right? Love that. Okay, so let's circle back around and show you our soup here. Look how brilliant this, the colors in this soup are. It's amazing, right? Yes. And so. Just to round out all these veggies, we're gonna garnish with this beautiful pesto. So lively and bright green and live and fresh and fresh garlic. Remember we're get, getting the fresh garlic. So I'm putting a dollop 
of this chunky pesto on there. Do you have a basil spray? <laughs> So, I don't think so. Let's see. So we'll just have to have a, a sip of that. Tell me what you think, taste. Sarah. I wish y'all were here to taste I it. I know. Mm -hmm. Thank y'all so much for chiming in. We saw that there were lots of friends from North Carolina and lots of family members. And just want to say thanks for being here with us today. You know us well, and you know that we are passionate about you know bringing help into the home and. Gosh, I wish you could be here. This I is know. So, so, does anybody have any questions? I think Katie's gonna in the do, chat. You can you can type in. Is it typing in questions yep, in the chat? Yeah. Okay, so, so let's hear from you. Yeah. We're so the for questions. the directions are: if you look on, hover your mouse over your Zoom screen, you'll see a little icon that says chat. And if you click on that, you should be able to chat a message. So we'll we'll look for those if anybody has any. Or I suppose if you want to unmute yeah. your microphone for a moment, you could ask your question. One thing I want to say is Mary and I are we're excited about a series of online cooking classes. This is a new forum for us. We've been doing a lot of cooking classes locally. So it's fun to reach um, so many people, bring, to, bring people together with food has always been such a fun thing for us. So we really appreciate you joining us and we'd love your feedback. You can contact us um, on our website, maryandsarah.com. So we're doing a little overhaul on that website. Yes, so we're going to have our features and um, there'll be some changes coming. But if you do want to reach us, just maryandsarah.com. So we do have one question. Someone asked if you can use a Vitamix blender instead of the food processor for the pesto. The answer to that question is yeah. absolutely. Sarah and I are really partial to the food processor for making pesto because we like a little bit of a more particulate matter, a little bit of a chunkier um, style of pesto. If you do it in your Vitamix, it's just going to be super pureed, and that's delicious. I mean, but it's sure, and easy. And one benefit of doing it in the Vitamix is that you can just throw whole garlic cloves in there so it removes yeah. the step of having to mince your garlic mm -hmm. so you know in a pinch by all means i i i'll give the, the um food processor for pesto but just this is the way we do it okay so. another question is is it okay to drink the lemonade at night or will sleep be affected um no i can't caffeine. see that there would be any effect on sleep there's no caffeine in here and um I think actually a great time to drink this lemonade is if you have a, a sort of a tummy that doesn't feel settled because the ginger in this drink will help with nausea or digestion of food. Yeah. But you know what would be good if you're trying to go to sleep? I would feel inclined to make a little chamomile tea and to pour some of this in it. That would okay. be kind of fun. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we did we have one more uh, we have a couple more questions. Okay. Somebody wants to know where they can buy the grater. If you want to know more about the grader, you can reach out to us directly through our website and eventually we'll have more information on that to come. And we'll send a link to the website in the follow-up yeah. email yeah. in case you don't know how to get to that. Um, somebody else wants to know how long can you keep the lemonade drink and the pesto in the fridge? How long will they Great last? Great questions. So I would say when mm, the way I like to store the pesto is to take it out and put it in a glass uh, container with a little bit of olive oil yeah, on you top. Just pour a little olive oil. It acts as a preservative, so it's so, like almost it, it prevents yeah. oxidation. That's right of the the green basil. But I'll just tell you this: it's never going to be as good the next day. It will last, For but sure. it does change. It's when I want really good pesto, I make it all on the minute, and it's so sure. how easy it is. It's never as good, yeah. but yes, if you seal it with oil, it'll last a week. week. Yeah. Okay. Another question. If somebody's asking if they host a salad master event, is the greater a free gift or can it be? And um, can they host you? How do they host so, you? Thank you for asking that question. Sarah and I do work for a company called Salad Master. So we are busy doing parties and educating people on how to use this machine. So you can reach out to us if you'd like to host a party. It is true. You get the salad master food processor as a hostess gift if you host a party. So it's a big win for everybody. We love your support. For all of you locals. Yes. Mm -hmm. Bay Area. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Right. 
Thank you all so much for attending. We really, really appreciate it. And again, it's our mission in this life to share making healthy delicious. Cheers so to good health. Come back, come back to the next one. The we'll next one, we're doing another one in two weeks. So it's the Saturday, the February. 29th. And I think it's going to be a detox 29th. class. But if you have ideas for what you want, please let us know. And we're going to be posting some information on YouTube here. And we're, I think the next video that we're going to post is a no bake brownie. So it's enzymatically rich, takes about 10 minutes, no cooking necessary. Again, we're always about making healthy delicious. So chime into it. And if they yeah. subscribe to your YouTube channel, they'll get those regularly. Yes. And information will right. be in the follow-up. So we're building out a YouTube library. So do subscribe and you'll be um, we'll give you recipes weekly. Thank so you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, everybody. You'll get all this information in your follow-up email. Yay. Thanks.